If you look at the amount of cost associated, you're talking about four to five billion pounds a year in terms of tax spend by the UK government on crime associated with brain trauma. So it's a huge issue. I'm a clinical neuropsychologist and I've worked in trauma for many years, um, emergency department through to rehabilitation or people with brain injury. Um, trying to understand why people have brain injuries and what happens after brain injuries and what you can do after a brain injury to help people get back to their work, to society. A few years ago, I started working with a prison officer on a project that led to understanding that a lot of people in prison have brain injuries. So the problem was, A, there's the number of people in prison with brain injury. B, the reasons why they're in there is because of behaviours that are due to brain trauma. And C, it's incredibly wasteful of human capital, actual people. There's a link between such brain injuries and then violent crime, which is awful. And then if you look at it over in the big picture, there's a link between that, those violent crimes and then money. There's a, a lot of wasted money in the sense of having to run prisons, have people in prisons when people could be productive members of society. So why does that matter? And why do their brain injuries matter? Well, it actually changes their behavior. The brain is incredibly important for how you manage your own behavior, how you stop yourself from doing something. To have a brain injury is a bit like being a little bit drunk. You have two or three units too much that so you're not reading the situation well and you act without thinking. You're impulsive. Basically, brain injury triples your risk of violent crime if you haven't got the other criminogenic factors that we talk about, and doubles your risk if you have the other factors. If you look at the young people in prison, 12 to 18 year olds, 45% have a knockout history. So does it matter? Yes, it matters. It's a huge issue in people who end up in prison systems, regardless of gender and age. Kids who end up in prison, they tend to have parents who were neglectful. So parents who weren't able to be around to help them out, to look after them. So they were likely to have head injuries leading to loss of consciousness. So they have falls, though they have an accident, and then they end up having problems in school. They are more likely to be excluded from school and then end up in prison. Before I became a professor at the university, as I said, I was a clinical neuroscologist and my day in day out job was to support people with brain trauma. And what I discovered was we can help people with brain injury manage anger, irritability, depression, post-traumatic stress by helping them understand that's what they're experiencing, but also giving them prompts to help them to manage their emotions. So in the area of brain trauma, what we decided to do was put link workers into prisons. So the first set of prisons were for young people, so 14 to 18 and 18 to 21. And we showed that if you put a link worker who's trained as a psychology assistant with the support from a neuropsychologist, they can screen for whether this young person has the effects of a brain injury and then what to do. With the link workers in prisons led to various changes. So what was happening is we helped prisons in the UK to pick up on this issue. So every person coming to prison gets screened for a brain injury to rule out whether there's a brain injury. So do they have a personality disorder or a brain injury? Are they suicidal? Mm, they may well be. And they might may very well may be if there's a brain injury in the picture. So that's become an important part of the process of understanding people coming to prison. This is very much an Exeter University-led piece of work, and I'm very fortunate that I've been asked to take on a number of roles in some key organisations because of this work. For example, being an advisor to a number of these UN groups. There's a World Health Organisation group I'm also now working with. And the lovely thing is, I have fantastic PhD students who are doing wonderful work with my collaborators in Bristol and Oxford, and they're developing the skills to look at large data sets, entire populations. They're using data sets that are incredibly important to predict what needs young people have and therefore drive change in society. So if you're a victim of violent crime, or if you're a perpetrator, if we screen for brain trauma, we can then put in the right kind of support for you. That program is in the discovery phase. We're in the middle of looking at how can we do this in custody? Who does the screening? A similar project we did with Devon Corn Police 
So in context of trying to understand the long-range developmental factors that may lead to people developing problems in terms of their psychiatric status, potential for violence, also potential for suicide. We've been working with um, Dr. Sue Misson, consultant psychiatrist at the Murray Gullings Neuroimaging Centre here at the University of Exeter. It's amazing we can bring together such resources to be able to address these long-range patterns of impact of early adversity on brain and behaviour.